humans to mound humans and monsters alike are separate. Humanity fights to live and monsters fight to destroy. Common sense, isn't it, that the monsters are the bad guys and humans are the good guys? Yes, humans, after all, are the main territory of the planet. The demon lord, ruler of all monsters and supernatural beings alike, a being who existed for a long time, and then the king, a being who also existed for the longest time. Protecting the kingdom and mankind, naturally both are enemies. The history of monsters and humans fighting for territory or purging each other's race. Yet in reality, the only reason why the demon king and the king are at each other's necks all the time is because they're simply crying babies. Morgan Le Fay, the demon lord, harboring the title of the fairy queen due to her being well, a fairy, and other things, and Artoria Pendragon, the king having the blood of royalty and that of a dragon within her. Though in the eyes of her people, she's simply the perfect king. She is the only one who can match Morgan in battle after all. Both are equals, aiming to defeat one another over a stupid fight. Hey, hey, Morgan, leave my teddy bear alone. Oh, sister, your things are mine. You should know that by now. You chump! The young Artoria simply began biting at Morgan's arm angrily as Morgan yelled in pain. You little brat! You started it! That's right. The reason why the world is close to an all-out war between humans and monsters is because of a stupid sister rivalry, especially after the teddy bear that both Artoria and Morgan fought for got destroyed when both pulled on it. This got both to declare war against each other. Morgan runs away and grows her army to destroy humanity and Artoria raising her kingdom so that they may protect each other against whatever evil doing Morgan will bring. Few, yes, almost complete. The ritual is coming in great progress. Morgan was seen in the throne room. The curtains shut as any sunlight from the windows was blocked away. Any light from the chandeliers was gone. There she, the queen which she prefers to be called, stood in the centre of the throne room. On the floor was a ritual circle, a magic circle that harboured all kinds of runes implanted into the ground. A pentagram. Today she shall summon a familiar, a servant to do her bidding. Yes, she may have many familiars already that she either made or took from the other monsters as pets, etc., but now she shall see what fate brings to her. What soul shall be brought to her by the gods? What will fate decide to give her as her personal familiar? Head soul of afar, I, Morgan Le Fay, demon lord that brings destruction to the world, call you forth. Someone whose will is strong, a being that will carry whatever burdens are planted into them. Someone that will be by my side, I call you forth. Morgan shouted as the spell finished. What she caught was a glimpse, a glimpse of a world, a land of steel. A land in which the light was blocked from entering that land of steel that had many blades of all sorts that she sensed just by looking, cursed holy demonic and so forth, yet the blades looked like graveyard with a blinding light that enveloped the room. Morgan herself stared on unfazed at the light. Though it indeed was quite powerful, her cold demeanour did not falter once. She must have summoned something amazing indeed to be her familiar. Yet, she can't help but still wonder what that glimpse of that world was. She remembered it all too perfectly in her mind, and to say she was intrigued with whatever that was, wherever that place was, it truly felt lonely and heavy. Standing in the middle of the circle was something she didn't expect. Clad in black body armour, the familiar's appearance consists of red and black, white hair and steel eyes showed the eyes of a true warrior. A human? No. This can't be. Why a human of all things? Blasted. Is this what fate decided to give her? Servant Archer, I have responded to your call. I ask of you, are you my master? The servant asked as he looked at Morgan, though his face froze as he began taking in the appearance of the woman in front of him. So the gods decided to give me a human of all things? Morgan mumbled, looking at Archer up and down, inspecting him as she was pleasantly surprised. If this is what fate gave me, so be it. Yes, at least you know that you're my familiar, and I'm your master. Hmm, I think I'd prefer you call me queen, like everyone else. 
Morgan said, not liking being called master. This is the worst possible outcome to ever happen to me. Why is my luck so horrible? Archer mumbled. Morgan's ears caught Archer's words as she raised a brow. Worst possible outcome? What are you muttering about? Do you know what's going on? Morgan asked. No. Not a clue, Archer replied with a dull voice. His arms crossed as he looked at Morgan. Though I do know I was summoned by a witch. Archer replied. Which? Morgan asked. Hmm. Yes, I suppose I can be considered one. Interested, I might have the others put that title on my statue next. That's a good title, my personal familiar. Morgan began taking down notes on her notebook. Archer looked blankly, then looked around the place he was in. The curtains opened and the lights on the chandeliers appeared. What the hell is going on? Archer asked himself. It's even odd, since he wasn't given any information about the time period or his mission. No. Is he even here for a mission? He has a connection to Morgan. He feels it, and he knows, too, that she must feel this connection as well. Wait a minute. You said personal familiar? Why him? 